Welcome to Insights. I'm Eric. I want to do a quick open review, open content review for Bitcoin because price action dictates it. Bitcoin has jumped the creek and, and, and in doing so entered markup, which is uh, consistent with acceleration to the upside. There's a lot of people buying in and Jason, and I think you have to understand what you're doing. The evolution of the trade frames all price actions so that we know what we're doing. It's the discipline keeps emotion out of it. So that's what we're going to do. We need to first assess the phase of the evolution of the trade. Right here would be where we read that in column B. It's empty, so it's in the A and E phase. The other phases that we're looking for would be marked by different codes. Uh, we can explain those more in detail. Subscribers already know about that. In this case, we would be waiting for a reset, a reset to buy back in, a reset to escalate our core position or, or whatever. If we tip profits, we want to reestablish our core position. The question is, is, should we be selling? The answer to that is studying the three time frames. The three time frames are relatively stable, uh, except for the daily. The monthly price and time cycles are black and negative, which means everything's below the mean cycles. Weekly is showing the same. So this is a relatively young trend. The daily at 62 days up is getting extended. And extended is almost four standard deviations in both the price and time cycles. Actually, it's still three, but if they're, they're climbing fast. The question is, is how far can they climb? Well, the answer to that is in part by it will energy support this for people who are unfamiliar with DI. You're going to have to go look it up inside the blog as a description of how energy works. But readings of 51 and 31 are pretty bullish energy builds. They there means there's plenty of energy. The distribution in the leverage markets, futures and options markets favors continuation. When this number dips lower, falls below zero, goes negative, a bear setup is 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 minus 60. Um, and, and various combinations. The computer will show us what they are. We're not talking about that right now because we're going to have to wait for Friday's update, which will come before the New York Stock Exchange closes. But really, the energy is what's caused and supported this rally. It's what the bears missed. Um, it's one of the reasons why, if this doesn't dissipate and fall lower, we're going to push these numbers even higher. So how high can we go? Well, I can only, I, I, I pulled in the silver as a means of comparison. You need to find a volatile market. I don't want to use Bitcoin as an example because you're comparing itself against past cycles. I want to show that these cycles exist in other markets and how they lay, how they unfold as price goes into an accelerated upside move. The breakout of silver in the summer of 2020, of which everyone got on board, and we're still waiting for silver to resume. Uh, and, and it's getting a lot of people frustrated, but it first showed this again is the price cycle and the time cycle. It first showed extension, mostly price extension in uh, June, late June. And you can see how these numbers began to grow. And if I was here and I was commenting on this and I had created a video at the time, I would have said, well, there's more time here. Uh, these price cycles are extreme, but silver is a volatile market. And I'd say, Hey, this thing could probably, and it has done this before, go on to five standard deviations or higher. And as we watch, as we go through July, we can see that it reached, it crossed above five in July, and it reached a high here in August at eight standard deviations, where time was 3.2. And we can take a look as we scroll down that the time cycles pushed as far as four, and which is is pretty high too. They never really got higher than eight. This was really the selling point. Anything when you cross above five starts to be like you're pressing your luck. I know that's an old game show. I have no idea how to play it, but I remember it's of the title. You don't want to press your luck when the cycles gets really extended. Five is usually a mark and extremely volatile. Bitcoin's even more volatile than silver, so 10 is a possibility. So when we look back here and we say, well, is it time to get out? How far can this go? Yeah, it can go higher and we need to understand that and the bears need to understand that or at least the risks of it. The bulls will take it to an advantage. We follow the evolution of the trade. You kind of give yourself a point that says, you know, at this point, I'm gonna either hold for because the primary trend is so young, 
which is right here, it's on 7, and the time cycles are still black and negative. And therefore, when this corrects, I'm going to accept it. If I have to take profits, I give myself an out, maybe five, maybe eight standard deviations. Time is less flexible. This one's on three. It usually doesn't go much past four or five, and I wouldn't push it. Usually when you get past, uh, you start to approach four and a half. It's, it's, it, when the old saying goes is when time's up, the move's over. And I, three is not, I mean, three is not the drop dead zone, but we're getting close. I'd say a couple more weeks um, at the most, um, maybe into February, February high. It's difficult to know because we'll have to watch this. This is why you subscribe to the matrix and you follow this on a daily basis. You can be a position trader that follows the primary trend or you can, you know, and you can make your decisions on a daily basis with this as well. So I have an idea I've revealed. I'm actually thinking because silver is a good proxy, moves as high as eight would not be uncommon. They could go even higher, especially in a market with full of inexperienced traders, which you know are chasing and it sky's the limit. That usually leads to pushing of the price cycle, but then you have to recognize when too much is, is when too high is too high and you, you, we get out. Before I end this, I want to take a look at the internals within Bitcoin. We talked briefly about energy, but we didn't go into detail. This is the pro and public index price, pro index and public, smart money, dumb money. As the market accelerates here, the one thing we tend to notice is, is that the pro index is no longer leading. It's creating the negative divergence. This happens, and when it does, it warns that it's the trend is being driven too much by the weak hands, and it's becoming unstable. Again, here, a, it peaked out here. The pro index peaked out. We broke out to new highs. Everyone got super excited. People got slaughtered because they probably bought into this, whereas the pros were selling the whole time. If we continue up and we push those higher standard deviations, and this doesn't rectify itself by breaking out and confirming it. It is a real warning. It's a real warning to take some profits or be prepared for a sharp decline or a protracted consolidation or what I call what the cycle of accumulation and distribution calls the cause building. This is a long cause building phase. I don't think the next one will be as long because this was cause building. It jumped the creek from here, but we could see some sideways action here in order to correct those excesses. This is here is reversals inside the matrix. We talk about reversals. Um, the computer studies them or finds them for us. You select up here and you find here's the price of GBTC, which is our tracker. That's that graystone tracker for Bitcoin. Everything above it is supply uh, demand zones. Everything below it are demand. So we got resistance and support. One of the things that I had mentioned earlier in the written reviews before I started doing the videos was is it, when price jumped the crow through this band, it jumped the creek and that it did. And when it jumps above creeks or falls below them, falls below them, price tends to accelerate. Most people see it and said, well, we broke out here, but really we broke up when price blew through this zone. I think what's going to happen here is we finally peak out temporarily or whatever, you're going to create some new demand zones that the computer is going to recognize. And that we're going to use those again, that are either going to become resistance or they're going to come support. But this is a dynamic process. Reversal zones are something that the computer tracks and creates daily, weekly, and on a monthly. So it's a continuous. It's, it's why I use the matrix. It's why people subscribe to it as well. You need to find out where those supply and and demand zones are. So in review, it's like the Bitcoins itself is accelerating. It's probably going to go higher. It can go a lot higher as we've seen in silver. And we have to keep that in mind. Bitcoin's even more volatile than silver. I think when Bitcoin's done, I think gold and silver are going to take over and take the lead. But that's something that we need to discuss at the time. It should be months from now. But it would be a ample rotational type of trade if the setup is correct and the matrix will decide that for us. We will use the evolution of the trade. So please come to the blog and study the evolution of the trade. It will most more, more you understand that, the more likely you are to be 
to understand the matrix and to want to even subscribe to the matrix and the matrix's information and power. So thanks for watching this video. There's more up on my channel. If I would comb through the ones that are open to the public. And if you want, you can contact me or comment below. If not, have a good trading day and thanks for watching.